welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Finance Minister Tito Mboweni released the 2019 medium-term budget policy statement today. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the highlights. Hi Terence. Hi Shamal. The deterioration in South Africa's public finances was a key theme. Yes, uh, it was a really dismal um, report from the Minister. Uh, he gave a sort of a, a, sort of a full no-holds-barred account of just how bad our fiscal position has become. And it's, it's really much, much worse than it was when the budget was released in February. And the main reason for that, I suppose, is because of the additional resources that have had to be directed towards ESKIM, which is in this very difficult financial predicament itself. And therefore, we've got this f nearly 50 billion rand this year being transferred to ESKIM and another similar amount in the following year as part of this uh, 230 billion over 10 years that's going to be transferred to the utility. And uh, really what we see is our, our budget deficit has, uh, has deteriorated to close to 6% now. But what is really worrying is the spiking in the debt to GDP ratio. So we've, uh, we've now got a situation where our debt has risen to 3 trillion rand and uh, it's breached the 60% uh, debt to GDP ratio, which is always a, a sort of a high level mark in terms of what the rating agencies look at. They start getting very nervous. We already know we've been downgraded by two of them with only Moody's to, co to go. Um, and we've breached that level now this year, which is much worse than what we thought in, in February it was going to be closer to the 56% type level. And the trajectory from here until the medium term framework ends in 2022-23 is for this to rise to over 70%. So we're getting into really dangerous t territory in terms of that. And it is a quite a shocking figure for South Africa. We haven't been anywhere near this uh, for a long, long time. In fact, uh, during this democratic dispensation, it's, it's really been by clawing that fig figure down and being very prudent. And then it's, uh, it's really only been rising since the global financial crisis has been rising steadily and we know because of the, of the very weak growth in South African economy that uh, revenue collections are under major pressure. So a gap keeps uh, rising and that gap is being filled by debt. So debt is the fastest growing item by far on the, uh, um, on the fisc uh, in the fiscus and, and expenditure framework and it's going to start surpassing the biggest ticket items in the budget and it could even pass, surpass uh, education in the coming years if if things aren't done to uh, to rein this whole uh, situ situation in. And what I think the, the really headline news today from the Minister is that he's looking to cut an additional 150 billion rand over the next three years, so 50 billion rand a year, out of our expenditure. Um, and he says that's actually the minimum because the sweet spot to start reining in that jet to debt to GDP ratio from his perspective uh, and to get it into deeply into the lower 60% uh, level rather than breaching the 70% level is more of a 240 billion uh, type expenditure cut. Now in South Africa where there's so much need and there's uh, so much uh, requirement in society uh, for government spending this is a drastic sort of measure. I think it will be described by the opponents as an austerity measure. Already some of their spending cuts have been announced, but they have to actually find another 150 billion over the next three years. That's going to be easier said than done in a context of, um, I think, unhappiness from uh, the unions with the framework that government is following, with the, the, growth, the, with the growth um, strategy that has been outlined by the minister, which is been dubbed uh, a neoliberal or even conservative to right wing and I think there's going to be some pushback against that in a, uh, at a time uh, that the unions would want to see government stepping up. The government's going to be forced it seems just out of necessity to step back. Another highlight relates to ESCOM. Yes, now I think here th th there was just no news <laughs> which was quite interesting and I think uh, there was a lot of expectation that this, this uh, medium-term budget policy statement was going to be all about ESCOM. And, uh, you know, that was e further, the ex expectation was further heightened by the fact that the uh, long-awaited paper, special paper, on the restructuring of ESCOM was released the day before by 
um, uh, Public Enterprises Minister Praveen Gordon, which outlined the unbundling strategy there. And the, the, the financial side, especially the debt relief side, was sort of kicked into Tito Mawini's court. And the expectation was that this, uh, this statement to Parliament would give us some idea of how this relief was going to un be unpacked. Uh, we know on the sort of liquidity side, uh, the government's done a lot. So th as I said earlier, 49 billion rand this year, 50 billion plus in the following year going into Eskom to make sure that it's, it's able to, um, to keep operational not uh, and as a going concern. And that's basically uh, debt that's having to be raised and directed into directly into Eskom as equity from the shareholder. So there's a lot happened on the liquidity front, but the issue is that the big risk to Eskom is actually its debt burden, its own debt burden uh, of about 450 billion to 500 billion. We don't know what the exact figure is at the moment, but it's, it's rising and there's a view that it could rise to over 600 billion. And that's been clearly stated as an unsustainable uh, debt burden on Eskom and something that it's quite, it just isn't making the revenues to be able to n never mind uh, pay the down the, the, the principal on that debt. It can't even pay down the interest. And there's a lot of other demands on Eskom's finances uh, from procurement to salary bills, etc. So the expectation was that the debt relief package would be unveiled today. And what was instead unveiled was that uh, the Treasury will not be uh, putting any announcement out about debt restructuring until it sees Eskom put some run on runs on the board with regard to its restructuring, its unbundling, which is going to be this vertical separation between generation, transmission, and distribution. And we know that uh, by the end of March next year is a deadline for the, the separation of the transmission company. Functional separation is still going to be under Eskom Holdings, but it will have its own board, which I think uh, creates some sort of independence there. So they want to see that those actions happening, as well as the cost-cutting that Eskom has promised this 30 billion about over a certain uh, time horizon that Eskom has been promising to see that whether that is coming through before they announce anything on the um, on the debt relief front. So I think uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the market reacts to that. Bondholders, I think, had been expecting some uh, firmer announcement on this. Uh, and I think as well as Moody's would have been looking very clearly how they're going to manage this because it's, it's not gone away. So it has to be dealt with at some point. I think, uh, uh, I suppose, a sympathetic reading here is that when they make this announcement, they can't afford for any of the um, R's not to be dotted or T's not to be crossed in the sense that uh, it can trigger defaults on bonds that won't only affect Eskom bonds but it will affect Treasury bonds because the idea is possibly to transfer the name of Eskom to Treasury and have a similar type arrangement for all shareholders but with a different uh, owner of the bond. So I think that's possibly a sympathetic reading or otherwise they just haven't you know, finalised their work on this which I think in the context of this burning platform um, that is Eskom is a little bit concerning because we need this certainty as soon as possible, and it will be interesting to see how the market and the ratings agency react to the fact that this package wasn't finalised this week. Is this enough for South Africa to avoid a downgrade by Moody's in the coming days? Yeah, as you say, it's the clock is now ticking to the next announcement. I think uh, where there's a little bit of fat in the system uh, is in the lies in the fact is that uh, we not uh, our, our ratings not on negative. So we we still investment grade at stable, so that gives Moody some sort of uh, sort of breathing space to kick for touch. These are dismal, dismal figures coming out of the treasury, and uh, unless growth starts happening again, they're going to remain uh, fairly dismal for some time. And uh, you know even the growth projections in in this uh, many um, medium term budget policy statements are not. Uh, anything to write home about only 0.5% growth this year right by the end of the three year horizon not even reaching the 2% level so the, so less growth starts happening in this economy and there are signs that things could be happening we have the investment conference next week but I think that uh, what I think the messaging out of uh, the Treasury and Minister Mbouini would have been to say look we're taking action 
so we know how bad it is, but and we we're going to start cutting expenditure, especially this 150 billion rand. We know it should be more, but you, you understand our societal constraints. But 150 billion, finding 150 billion rand is going to be very very difficult, given uh, given the, the nature of uh, government spending. Even though there's a lot of waste in the system, and we all know that, and corruption. But uh, it's going to be difficult to find that 150 billion. But I think a signal has been sent to uh, the ra to Moody's, basically, that we, we understand how bad it is. Um, we are taking some actions to uh, deal with, uh, with the problem. And uh, I suppose then the, the sort of Moody's now has to s see whether that is enough and give them a little bit more breathing space to when they actually, the, the, you know, the issues around the, the cutting of expenditure and whether there's going to be an additional tax. That's not visible at this moment. We're only going to get that visibility in February. So probably Moody's will also want to, much like Treasury's kept its powder dry with regard to Eskom's debt relief, you'll probably find my bet is that Moody's will probably want to keep its powder dry uh, with regard to its rating decision. And maybe th what we could see is a, a change in the, the outlook from stable to negative rather than a downgrade. But look, it's very bad. And I think on just on face value, uh, a downgrade is very, very possible. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily Email Newsletter.